Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. We are in a new setup right here. How about that? Pretty cool, huh? I'm starting off a little mini series here on YouTube on learning React. So we're gonna start from scratch all the way up to knowing how to do everything that we want to do. Wow. I'm also wearing my hat backwards, so I look like a douchebag. I look like that bully from your school that pushes you. Little nerd, what are you doing? You wanna learn? You're a programmer, you're staying on your computer all day learning your react. How about you react to these big guns I have here? I need to stop. People are gonna unsubscribe. Why you do this? Why you do this? I actually did a couple of react videos on this channel before. I had one on just like a 40 minute crash course on react to get you started, but it's really quick. I also did one on router, react router, another one on context API and another one on Redux. So this is, I think, in my opinion, is good enough to get you going. Uh, if you want to check those videos out, just search Redux or React on YouTube and I'm gonna pop up first because I'm amazing. People are really gonna unsubscribe, damn it! So basically in this mini-series, I really want to dedicate an entire video on each specific part of React so you can have a full grasp of the whole situation, okay? So this part today is gonna be about why we use React and some examples on how it differentiates differentiates, is that the word, uh, between vanilla JavaScript and actually using React. So what are the pros and cons? And then we're going to get into setting things up and also uh, all, the, all the parts that are important, which I obviously know all of them. And before we get going, I do want to say that JavaScript is very important to know before learning React. I would never ever recommend you starting off with React before you have a full grasp of JavaScript and ES6. So don't get started with React if you don't know JavaScript. If you don't know JavaScript, watch a couple of videos on my YouTube channel. I also have a full course on building out a bunch of projects using JavaScript and also learning about ES6 and all of those good stuff. And I actually have a discount right now. So if you check out the link in the description, coupon pre-applied. So that's good. There's also other creators out there. If you don't want to check out my stuff, there's a bunch of information out there to learning JavaScript. Hello, it's me, Mario. Okay, so let's get going. So before we actually dive into looking at a bit of React code, what I want to do before that is kind of explain why you should use React and what's the benefits, what's the downsides of it. All the downsides is, is you have to learn it and nobody likes learning. We're not in school, God damn it. Let's not swear. Let's get going. Okay, so vanilla JavaScript all around is pretty great. You can do a lot of things. You can grab things from your HTML and then you can do things with it. You want to animate it, boom, do a little bit of animation. You want to click on a burger, you can do that. You want to create this to-do list, which I have an example here. Shout out to my course. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm not going to mention the course again. <laughs> so basically what we're doing here is to just give you a quick example is we have some HTML here, like an input, a button, so these things here. And then I have a kind of a section here, a to-do container. And what I'm doing in JavaScript is I'm basically grabbing everything. So I'm reaching out to the DOM, just grabbing the everything from our HTML, so like the to-do, the buttons, the, the lists and everything. And then what I'm doing is I'm typing stuff, and when I click OK, I'm adding an item, right? Now, what's the problem with this? Well, technically, there's not really any problem, especially if you're building out smaller apps. It's perfectly fine to use vanilla JavaScript. I highly recommend it. It's going to get, you're going to be way faster. It's going to be way easier than jumping into something like React. So when would you use React? You would use React when you're building out a larger scale application. And you're going to notice this, like when you start building out something and you're like, oh my God, this code is 600 pages long and everything is a mess. Okay, then you need React basically. Uh, because what React allows you to do is kind of compartmentalize, is that even a real world word, is to split up your code into these small little packets, which we're going to talk about in a bit. But what are the advantages of JavaScript, just simple vanilla JavaScript? It's very fast, it's very, um, I, I, what I want to say is it's very fast to get going and it's very easy generally to build things out, right? Um, However, the, the one of the biggest problems is, is it's slow, all right? And what I meant again by fast is that it's fast to build things out. But actually, uh, the larger your app gets, if you're building it out in vanilla JavaScript, it gets quite slow because what we're doing here technically is we are reaching out 
to the DOM, right? So if I want the button, I have to go to the index.html, grab the button with JavaScript, bring it here, grab the input, bring it here. And that process of grabbing something from HTML, bringing it to JavaScript, so anything that's related to DOM manipulation is very slow, all right? So the browser is like, I, I don't know what to do with this or the computer, I'm not sure. But it, it's, it's a slow process, okay? Another problem is, um, is yeah, that we have the splitting going on, right? We don't have anything um, in one place. So we're doing this weird dance of grabbing things from here and then bringing it here and then manipulating our logic in a way and then pushing things back to the index.html. So if I add another item, and the interesting thing is when I refresh this, as you can see, these items still remain here because we're using uh, the local storage, which is a way to save some information to the browser. So when you refresh the page, it's not being lost. Now, here's another problem uh, with just vanilla JavaScript is our data. So basically, this is our data in this case, the only data that we have on this application, which is the text, right? The to-dos. We want to know what the text is. And the problem is that this lives in the index.html. So not only our HTML and JavaScript are separated, but our data is scattered all around the place, right? We have our data in the HTML. So again, we have to reach from JavaScript, get the data, save it into local storage. And then when we retrieve that local storage, uh, we have to grab the data from the local storage in JavaScript, generate the HTML and push it to the index.html. So this, this is like a crazy dance of grabbing things, um, grabbing things from HTML, bringing it to JavaScript, doing something with it, push it back to HTML. Our data is in the HTML, so that's basically uh, pretty bad. And the reason why I'm saying it's pretty bad is because if you have like your data, it, everything is generated through JavaScript, it's, it becomes incredibly fast. So as long as you're not working with the DOM, and everything is centralized in this one place of just working with raw JavaScript data, it becomes incredibly fast. So basically <laughs> what React does is it takes everything and puts it in one place. So your, your CSS, your uh, HTML, everything is being generated with JavaScript. All right, so you write JavaScript code and that JavaScript raw code basically generates the HTML and the CSS, which is super, super fast. And there are multiple benefits with this that, again, we're going to get into in the series. Wow. And you're going to see people call, and that's basically what a React component is. People try to explain it in complicated ways. A React component is when the state becomes immutability. No, it just basically, you just jumble up your HTML and CSS and JavaScript in one place. So basically just JavaScript generates everything for you. That's kind of the whole thing of a component is you encapsulate logic in, in a single file that does all the things. So maybe you have like a nav, right? So you would have one nav component and in that nav component, you have your HTML being generated. You have the styles already applied and the logic to make it toggle or something. Okay, so that's that's all the component is. Checkmate nerds. Okay, so again, uh, this is uh, well, I got tired explaining that. But again, JavaScript very good, uh, vanilla JavaScript. As long as you keep your projects fairly simple, I build out more complex things. Um, if we take a look here, we did this beat maker thing. We did well, maybe that's not that huge of a project, but we did, did the colors thing, right? And this already started to get pretty complicated. Look at how many things we're selecting here. And then it gets quite crazy, right? We have all of our logic in one place. And again, here, the, a lot of problems were that I needed to get some data from my HTML, which made it a bit more difficult. Okay, let's close everything. Whew, wowee. Let's take a look at some React code. now. In this episode, this is not how we're going to actually write React code, but I want to kind of show you what happens under the hood and give you some explanations of what's going on there. So let's go to CodePen, everybody. Wow, the best site on the internet. I'm not even going to lie. I never use it. I'm joking. No, I actually never use it, but today is the day. 
today's the day that we're going to use it. So again, what I said is that we don't write HTML code with React. We pretty much generate all the code uh, using JavaScript, right? So basically what you're going to find is when you build out your React project is on the HTML side, you only have one div. So something like a app like that, a div with an ID of app. And what you do with JavaScript is you basically inject all the generated code in here. All right. And we're going to see that when we're going to build out an actual, like a whole setup in VS code. Okay. So first of all, all we need is the libraries uh, to get started with React, right? There's specific code that's made uh, so we can start using it. Okay, so what we can do is we can go here to the settings thing on the JavaScript and we can go here to the search CDN thing and we can search for React. Now you're going to see two things here, React and React DOM. What is the difference? React is the overall package with all the functionality to build out um, apps. Now, the thing is React can be used in different ways, right? You can use React in the browser. You can also use React to create mobile apps, all right? So it has more than one functionality. So this is the overall package that we're gonna include. All right, so click on that. Now there's another one called React DOM. And again, this is another package that's specifically used to create web apps and render things out on the screen, on the DOM, right? So as you know, it even describes it here in a very the entry point of the DOM related rendering paths is intended to be paired with the isomorphic React, which is shipped as a React to NPM. Get out of here, nerds. <laughs> okay. So again, React DOM, if you want to do web apps, if you want to do mobile apps, you're going to have something else there. React Native, right? So good. Now that we included these two packages, we can close it up. Well, let's make this smaller. I need to zoom in here. Too much. Can you see? Hopefully you can see. Okay, so basically we can generate a div, a h1, whatever you want using React now. So the way we can, this is just a quick example here to kind of show you what happens behind the scenes in the package. But this is not the way we're going to write React code. This is just a little, a little bullshit. Okay. So I'm going to say react.createElement. And this is a way we can create an element. Element. Like that. And this basically takes three parameters. So A, B, and C. Okay. So A basically describes what element you want to make. I want to make a div, a button. Okay. Let's make a div right there. Okay. The second element, basic, the second parameter basically describes the props, so they're your properties. Like if you have an A tag, you have href, right? Or when you have an image, you have a source or a class or things like that. For now, I'm not gonna add anything, so I'm just gonna say null. And this, the C basically describes what's inside, right? So like this, let me go this way. So what's, what's here between the div? All right, this is the last parameter. So in this case, I'm gonna say, Hello, sexy boy. And that's it. We generated basically a div using React. Now we need to basically take this creation that we made and we need to add it in here, right? We need to render it out. So that's where React DOM pops in. And you need to write it exactly like I'm writing it, otherwise it's not going to work because they started caps locking here and screaming at the last part. But you say react dom dot render like that. And here is basically where you add your element. So I can copy paste this. So again, this takes two arguments, A and B. The first one is the thing that you wanna render out, which is gonna be this thing. I'm just gonna copy paste it here. I can comment this out, we don't need that. And the second one is going to be the place you want to render it out. So in this case, here in our, basically in this div, right? This is where we want to mount our whole app. So what we can do is we can just use simple JavaScript here and say document.query selector. And I can select the app and that's it. So we're rendering out. Now, again, this is a super simple app, not really an app, but this is kind of the gist of it. We create these elements 
or components that we're going to see and we're going to pass it down in here and render it out okay now what if i want to have more than one element we can also do that so i'm going to change this up a bit and what i'm going to do is cut this i'm just going to create a simple function because remember this is all javascript so i'm going to just create a function called app and this is going to return this react element right so now what i can do is just grab this whole thing clear it up and inside the parentheses here what i can do is just render out the app uh, what is this code pen thing why, why is it doing that so stupid oh my god okay we're starting from scratch that's so stupid react dot <laughs> create element and I can pass in the app here like that comma document dot uh, query selector and I can pass in that's so annoying and I don't want to figure out why is it doing that <laughs> see this is why I never use code pen okay let's see does that work what did I mess up what's wrong missing okay and what am i missing missing your ass that's what i'm missing i cannot see the code because you're blocking the code <laughs> why you do this oh my goodness hold up don't hold me up okay i'm missing a parenthesis here ha <laughs> jokes on me okay so again we have the same result and again all i did here was create a function that just basically returns this thing now what if i want to add multiple elements the create element and i'm gonna just do a div here and it's gonna be null and then i'm gonna do yeah so basically we had hello here or whatever right so basically again if you remember if we have a div here Basically, the last parameter is what's between the div. So basically, I can just add an array here. Just grab this, delete, add an array. And inside this array, I can basically add multiple create elements to create more. So I can do react, create element. And I can create maybe a h1, comma. I'm going to say null here. I'm not going to add anything. And the last one is going to be hello. Okay, like that. There we go. I just forgot the return keyword here and it works. So let's get rid of this, simplify this. So I can just stack as many create elements as I want here to render out uh, and generate basically some HTML code. Um, okay, but this is kind of weird. And again, the beautiful thing here is this is JavaScript. So I can basically add the time here if I want. I can do new date like that to locale string there we go close this up let's see there we go boom all right so i'm creating the elements here and i'm also working with javascript at the same time and here again if i want i can basically in the properties or props i can add a style so i can style uh, this element the way I want. So what I can do here is just add an object and in this object you would define all your properties. So in this case I can have a style here and I can set this equal to and this is going to look a bit weird but just again just go with me here uh, not equal to the double double dot as I used to say. I can add a color of red to this like that. Let me clean this up. This looks terrible. So there we go, take a look, we created our HTML using JavaScript, we added some styling to it using JavaScript, and we also used JavaScript <laughs> to add the time all in one file. Again, we're only using this to basically inject our app into, nothing else. Okay, so there we go, that's a little introduction. Again, we're not gonna be writing code this way. In the next episode, we're gonna dive deeper into JSX, which is gonna make this look seamless and super nice there we go thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed this episode and until next time i'm sending you the kiss of love
please don't unsubscribe thank you very much don't unsubscribe